Hello, my name's Lucy and today we're going to be cooking uh, chips, bacon, egg and sausage. Uh, so basically a fry up. Uh, this is a nice, easy, fairly quick one. Um, and I'm just, I felt in the mood for it. I've got bacon left over from uh, the macaroni cheese and I've got uh, sausages that I bought specifically because I knew I was going to have bacon left over and I always have some duck eggs in the fridge and I always have some potatoes in the cupboard. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, as a reminder, what I do is um, I don't edit these at all. Well, I, I, there is a bit of editing because the uh, the process of creating a video from the files on the camcorder means I have to glue some things together and put some sound back across it properly. Um, but I don't do any cuts or any speeding up so you can see exactly how long things take. This makes things easier for me in the editing um, and also means I think it's nice for you just to see what's going on. But that also means that um, I have a bit of time to chat to you as things go along. Uh, also, I'm going to first, the first thing you need to do is wash your hands, uh, which I've already done because I've just done the washing up. The second thing you need to do is uh, put on your apron because there is going to be some uh, fat splattering. Yes, um, and let's see, right, and also I haven't got everything out ready because that's part of cooking. The part of the time of cooking is to go and get all of your things out of your cupboards and get all of the equipment you need and uh, make sure that you've got all of it. So, because I'm making chips, um, these are going to be oven chips, but they're oven chips from a potato, so I will make the potato into chips. Um, and then chop it up. So there is going to be a bit of uh, a bit of chopping in this. So I've got my chopping board and my knife, and getting everything else out. Right in the fridge, there is the eggs. I mean, I'm going to have two eggs. Um, I'm bringing out the entire tub so that I have something to uh, something to stand the eggs up in. There's my juice to drink, and then. bacon and sausage and I also have mayonnaise. Uh, so egg, bacon, sausage and the potatoes in the cupboard over here. And yes, it's two potatoes. And I'm gonna have this as with many foods I do, it's less good for this one because it's not healthy. Uh, to do two days in a row, but I'm going to do it two days in a row and I'm going to make all of the chips now, cook half of them and leave half of them. So I've got a tub ready for that. Um, and the bag ready for the sausages. There we go. And the bacon's already in a bag. So there's the juice. I'm also going to want a knife and fork and plate. And a square of kitchen paper wiping my greasy fingers. I think the maintenance can go and live over there as well. And the plate's going in the oven for, uh, in the second oven for being preheated, um, but we won't start that now. So, equipment that I need, I'm going to need, oh, actually, in the lower drawer, I'm going to need the smaller frying pan for the two eggs. I'm going to need my spatulas for cooking the eggs. I'm going to need a tray for the chips. I'm also going to need the garlic salt for the chips. Here somewhere. I'm sure I've got some. This might take a while, hang on. It's not garlic salt, it's garlic granules. There we go. And I'm going to need the actual salt as well. And I'm also going to need to get the uh, grill out because I'm frying the eggs in the saucepan but I'm grilling the sausages and the bacon and I'm baking the chips so it's all a bit of a, a bit of a combination right and I think that's everything so I'm going to come over here and I'll see if I think of anything as I'm working 
There you see, you can see my chopping board. Um, now first of all, you can see the potatoes have bits on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put them under the tap and pull all of these bits off because these bits are uh, you shouldn't eat them. They're they're very bad for you. Um, but you can just pull them off and then dig out the little eyes in that have left behind, and then it's perfectly fine. So I'll do one second washing these up. These are obviously the roots of the potato, uh, but uh, if the potato is in the dark, it's been trying to sprout even though it's not in the soil. So you could just bury those potatoes and get a potato plant. Right, and throw all of this uh, gunk into the bin. I've managed to get my glasses wet now, and there's not a really convenient way to dry them. So now we're going to, uh, I'm not going to peel the potatoes, I like my chips, they're more like potato wedges really, but I call them chips because of the particular way that I make them. Um, I like them with skin on, however um, I don't mind also cutting off bits of the potato. So here see, you can see that's where the root of the, the, root of the uh, roots were, so you just cut those bits out. And basically I'm just going to keep, keep cutting. And that's there's a bit of broken skin on the potato, and if you do that, then you find that there's bad bits in that they've gone deeper into the potato again. You can just cut them out because you shouldn't have large bad bits. But again, it won't it won't kill you if uh, you miss a tiny sliver, as long as you get the main the main bits out. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, and okay, so on to theatre. I think I haven't told you about watching Mary Antoinette at the. Uh, at the egg, uh, which is a live stream, obviously, um, that one was uh, pretty good. Pretty good. It's um, the actress playing Mary Antoinette. It was another student piece, but I think it's an, a more advanced student piece because it didn't do the thing where the first year student pieces did, where they made sure everybody got sort of like an equal part and an equal things to do. The actress playing Mary Antoinette had far more to do than anybody else. Um, she was very, very good. Um, I d I, it, it, it's not a very good play, is the thing, I don't think. It's like, it's trying to be about something like, it's sort of converted to sort of modern language, so it feels more, con cause it's, it's a fairly accurate recounting of bits of her life, although it is, again, it's told sort of in bits rather than a solid through line, so you see events from many, like, many years apart. They're told in chronological order, but it's not, um, it's like scenes from a life rather than the story of the life. Um, and then also, I mean, obviously Mary Antoinette gets her head chopped off. And while she's in, and, and like, it's showing her as a sort of like spoilt rich person. Um, and even then, like, the fact that she got blamed for everything to do with the French Revolution for being, spending too much when she, because, and it's because she was a young woman who was a foreigner. And it's like, um, maybe, maybe some of the, it is the king's fault as well, possibly. Maybe no, oh no, he's a man. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't get blamed so much. Um, but uh, like the thing, and so. But anyway, so they've they've got that, and then then weirdly they have like discussions while she's in jail, she's discussing with the jailers like the systems of of uh, like governance and whatever. And it's it's like, a where did all of this come from? Like, it's, it's, it's like discussing Rousseau. Um, like, if she thought like this, <laughs> this, why wasn't she using any of it before? And then also, like, it's, it's making it... It's like trying to have the debate about the systems, except, uh, well, A, uh, the royalty is a terribly parasitical system in the first place, but then she's, like, arguing, oh, well, the poor people can't look after themselves. And it's like, no, that's not true. So... Um, so it's not even a debate, she's just saying things that are wrong. Um, and it's just, this was the debate, part of the debate at the time. Um, but we've sort of moved on since then, and then it doesn't, so it doesn't work with contemporary language. Basically, if it had just been the straight up story of her life, that would have been more interesting, although it would have made her, although she isn't particularly sympathetic in the way that she's presented. Um, 
but at the same time, um, it's not. Right, I think I've got all the. Oh no, there's another bit. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't go deep enough to, or make you care about her enough for that. But then at the same time, it tries to have this sort of philosophy thing, except it's very shallow, surface level philosophy and or and uh, politics that doesn't really go anywhere. So you're like, well, what's the point of that? And you're not sure what the point of any of it was. It's like it's supposed to be condemnation of the one percent, but it doesn't really feel like that. It's like, yes, they're yes, she's rich and yes, she's shallow, but like they haven't done anything with that. Or the only thing they've done to make it sort of feel like it's anything to do with contemporary politics is make this make them speak in more contemporary slang. But that's like that's not enough. So anyway, I didn't think I wasn't impressed with it as a play. But, uh, like I said, the actress playing Mary Antoinette was uh, doing a very good job. And, like, if you see any bad bits, just cut them out. So, yeah, like I said, the actress playing Mary Antoinette was doing a pretty good job. Um, so, uh, overall, it wasn't terrible. And I haven't seen any other theatre. There's something else I'm going to watch this week called Roots, which is... Um, a se I'm not quite sure what it's going to be like. It's a semi-interactive thing from the... Again, from the egg, but from, the, like, their sort of... It's, it's, it's active for 30 days and it sort of vaguely implies that uh, there's like, there might be different things each day. I'm not sure or if it's just you can watch it all at once. I'm not sure the advertising hasn't been particularly clear. So uh, we're going to see about that. Um, and yes, I had, I had my first jab, I said. Um, I think I haven't talked to you since I've had it. It was fine. I didn't particularly get any side effects. Or so far, it was like three days ago. So I think, uh, yeah, I think um, I'm out of the uh, out of the risk area for any of the worst of it. I have sort of, it was the it was the Pfizer vaccine as well, so there shouldn't be a blood clot risk. But I am keeping sort of like a mental eye on my limbs. It doesn't help that I've had a weird tight feeling in my leg for like before I had the vaccine, and that was already making me a bit paranoid. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, ke I'm keeping an eye on myself, but I should be fine. And, of course, the, the, the risk of any serious adverse side effects is infinitesimally small. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I'm glad I've got that done. I feel it'll, make me, it'll make me feel slightly more secure in that I've got to take my car for its MOT. Uh, which I'm obviously going to be fully masked and everything. Um, and I'm going to. Fortunately, the MOT place um, is only like less than five minutes drive. That's a bit big. Um, and so I'm going to drive there wearing a mask and gloves with my windows open the entire way. Uh, and that should keep the car safe for whoever then has to actually do the work on it. And then obviously when I go and pick it up, uh, do the same thing on the way way back and make it safe for me uh, and then uh, uh, yeah, and also you can't hang around there but it's convenient that it's uh, five, uh, less than five minutes drive because it means I just walk back here and then wait and then walk back and pick it up later on so that's all fine um, so that's the thing I'm going to do this week as well and then the only other particular things that um, then the only other place I go is the shops, so I'll feel more secure in the shops as well uh, until I can finally have my second vaccine, then wait two weeks, and then I can finally start going to the theatre again in person. Right, okay, and again, sort the chips into uh, two piles of roughly equal, roughly equal sizes. And by roughly equal, I mean... I wish I didn't have to do this, um, but it's almost compulsive. Find uh, two chips of roughly the same size and put one in, one in each uh, one in each box.
Uh, yes, and then when I, 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 I stop as if this takes some massive amount of concentration. Of course, it doesn't. I'm just being weird. Da, 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 nearly done now. And obviously, the cooking of everything else is uh, the chips take 20 minutes in the oven at 180 degrees. Uh, it's a fan oven. And other than that, Um, the sausages, I cut the sausages in half, or you'll see, so they go under the grill for not particularly long. So yeah, this should be mostly waiting for the chips to cook right. And again, you could, if you wanted to keep them really fresh, put the potato, put water in with the potatoes, but I'm not going to bother, they're always fine. Uh, those can go ready to be washed up. Right. Okay, so this will have oil, salt, pepper, and other granules. So, drizzle over the olive oil. Not too much, because otherwise, too much makes it too greasy. That's plenty. And then. Sprinkling of salt, a grind of pepper, a light one, and then the garlic granules. This doesn't have one of those lid things, so you just uh, sprinkle, and that's a fairly hefty sprinkle. Rub everything that we sprinkled over all of them and sort of spread them out into a single layer. Yeah, like I say, it's going to be 20 minutes, maybe 25. These, because some of these are thicker. Um, but obviously, I can keep an eye on that as I cook. Now I can wash the uh, oil off my hands. Oh, Right, start preheating the oven to 180. My kitchen timer has turned itself off. I did buy a new one because it's been flamed up for a little bit of a while now. I can't work out where it's cooking. new kitchen timer because I can't be bothered to take the back off that one and try and make it work. The batteries are fine by the way because I changed the batteries um, and it still occasionally kept going off. So I've got a timer here which I will pull the front off. There's instructions in the leaflet but I feel like um, the instructions are going to be very limited. Just take out the little tab that stops uh, the battery from being active. And it's still, still not come on. Oh, this is not helpful. What do the instructions say? Open the battery door cover on the back of the timer unit. Remove the digital plastic, but remove the plastic battery of favour. And the digital display will remain on, but it didn't remain on. Right, I'm going to interesting for you. I'm going to try and open this up. Mm. Let's see if it's got any plastic left in it. No, I've got plenty of these batteries as well, so it's just... And then close it back up again. There we go, now that now it's got itself on and jump into place. So, hang on, let's see how loud it is. Yeah, that's fine, it'll sound the same. And I'm going to call it 22 minutes. Uh, and 
like I say, that's still preheating, so while well, that's preheating, think wonderful little diversion there while I try and make my kitchen equipment work. So uh, while well, that's preheating, sausages, what was the date on these sausages? I'm fairly sure they're in I just want to double check because I didn't buy them. 25th of May, that should be alright. Oh, that was why I didn't want to wash it my knife just yet. Uh, I like to cook my sausages in half. Because uh, it makes them cook quicker. No, it's not fine. So, you basically, you split the sausage like that and split, and split it out. Um, and that, that's nice and... Uh, that cooks quicker basically and it also um, makes sure it's cooked all the way through which you can't always tell if you cook them whole. So that's one, two, these are eight sausages. I'm going to have four because then um, I use them all up rather than having to throw some away because I won't keep them after tomorrow. So I'm going to just sink the knife in. You don't need a really sharp knife for that, you can do it with a butter knife, it's just, um, I obviously already have this knife out. I have enough handle for all meat, so wash my hands. And I'm also going to preheat the grill, the grill takes a while to get up to temperature. So there's the sausages. So they're going to go on like that, and I'm going to get the bacon out ready because uh, those are going to take probably about 15 minutes, um, and you'll turn, I'll turn them occasionally, but 15 minutes I'll be sure they're done. I might pull them out sooner, but the bacon will probably only take about five minutes, so I don't put that in straight away. I just get it um, all opened up ready, and I've got a streaky bacon at the moment because I wanted that for the uh, macaroni. Usually I'll buy back bacon. I like back bacon. But yeah, that's ready to go under. That's ready to go in once it heats up. Then that'll be put on. Um, and obviously the other thing is... Uh, that's ready to go on. And obviously we we'll need the knife, knife and fork to uh, turn things over. Um, and then the, this salt ready to go on later and then the eggs, I'll, like I said, I'm cooking two eggs. I'll cook them in this little frying pan over here. That's as much as I slanted. Right, there we go. Let's tilt that. I'll cook this little frying pan over here and it's good to have a... This is bed, this is sunflower oil. It's good to have uh, oil covering the entire bottom of the pan. That means you can sure that they don't stick and they also go nice and crispy. So that's ready for that. But again, eggs, even duck eggs, um, five minutes is usually more than uh, more than enough to uh, get them cooked. So also, I, like I say, I'm going to pre. I'm going to put the plate heating in one of the ovens, and if anything gets done before then then I'll pop everything on the preheating plate just to keep it nice and warm. Uh, but now this can go in the oven. It's not quite preheated, but it's nearly there. And start. And then I'm just basically waiting. Um, and obviously when it gets down to 15 minutes, I'll put the sausages under. When it gets down to uh, 11 minutes, I'll turn the potatoes round. Um, when it gets down to like sort of seven minutes, I'll pull the sausages out. Um, and put the bacon on and put them back under and then you have to keep watching them and turning them uh, and five minutes I'll start heating the oil and start frying so the only things I've got to do while I'm waiting is just wash up this one oh, this, these two things the uh, knife and the chopping board and then I've got a different poetry book today it's called A Sackful of Limericks and it's by Michael Palin 
that Michael Palin. Um, and I got this, he came and did a talk at the Theatre Royal um, a couple of years ago now, and then he was also selling some of his books. So um, there wasn't a chance to meet him afterwards, sadly, he sort of left straight away. But he had pre-signed some of the books, and I specifically bought the Limerick's book because it was one of the ones that he pre-signed. So that's nice. And yeah, the talk was generally, it was about, um, like it was in two halves. Half of it was about a different book that he'd written, written about the Erebus, which is about, um, it was one of the ships that went to find, with Franklin, that went to find the Northwest Passage and got lost. And they've recently found it. Um, the same recently, white people recently found it. Uh, the uh, native um, Canadians who uh, lived in the area indigenous people, that was the word I was searching for, uh, who lived in the area, knew exactly where it was and always had because they'd encountered the people and they'd been shot at by them. Um, so, mostly just a case of people not listening. But anyway, um, so he talked a bit about like that, the story of what happened to the ship and sort of what gave an overview of that and what he'd written about and also why he'd written it. Um, and then the other half was obviously about the price in the years because that's the that's the thing that a lot of the audience were interested in. And, and then he sang the Lumberjack song. So that was all. That was all. Uh, that was very nice. Right. Oh. This doesn't... St it, it's got a twisty screw, but the screw uh, slips. So it takes... Right. Okay, it's like for limericks, and I, honestly, limericks are so short, I'm just going to go for the start and read them one by one. I, ha I have had a flick through, like, when I bought it, and then last night when I remembered that, when I was looking through my bookshelf, I went, oh, this book, for something to read just for myself, I went, oh, this book of poetry, I can show you this. Uh, okay. The young man from Vermont, who had all that a young man could want, nice clothes, lots of cash, a non-serious rash, except, except both legs were on back to front. Uh, it doesn't rhyme. He, he notes. Sorry, this is a bit at the start where he's like about the art of writing limericks. A boon to all limerick writers, the number of time... Okay. Oh, there, here we go. A fellow from Grantham called Titus, who was a boon to all limerick writers, the number of times his name could make rhymes was practically ad infinitus. So th these are his, his limericks that he makes notes on, writing limericks. Um, and then there's the policeman from Tring, who had an extraordinary thing, which he then uh, doesn't finish that limerick. And then uh, a limerick for a nice lady called Paula, who said she was a midwife, and no one ever wrote mid uh, limericks about midwives. They said of a midwife called Paula, if there was any trouble, just call her. Her skills in the water she learnt from a porter, who delivered fr fish fresh off a trawler. So, um, not necessarily flattering to Paula. All right, and then on to the main body proper. Here we go. A doctor from Aberdeen had a pet anaconda called Jean. If you said please, she'd give you a squeeze, but few of the patients were keen. So that's a good one. A garage mechanic called Knowles had more than his fair share of holes. He had two in each ear and four more quite near, and nostrils the size of bread rolls. A young man from Redcar called Vince used to drop very obvious hints. Like, oh dear, I say, it's my birthday today, and I'm right out of after eight mints. A deep water sailor called Rod used to dive in and rescue live cod. He wasn't a fool who thought nets cruel, but he certainly was pretty odd. I like the limerick. It's, it's basically, it's a, it's a good form, because occasionally when you do things um, then that break the form, then that's... Especially particularly surprising if you've done it if you've done it well. There's a couple that I like that. Like uh, there's one I can't remember all of it. I think, but I think it goes something like: There was a young man from the moon who wet all of his soup with a fork. Um, and basically, there's a word that would obviously rhyme that isn't used, and then a wrong word. Is, and basically, I like that. But then, I, but for, to like that, you then have to like the um, ordinary limericks as well. And just they usually have a good rhythm to them. Um, and if they're done well, they're quite funny. A banker from Ealing called Stott awoke with a terrible spot. 
Though he put on some plaster, it only grew faster, and at work it went off like a shot. There once was a fellow called Lake, whose motives were somewhat opaque. He'd give you a punch, then take you to lunch, and pretend that his kneecaps were fake. An eccentric landowner called Grey spent Christmas in a very strange way. Instead of nice presents, he'd give people pheasants and laugh as they all flew away. So also there are, this is also illustrated, and it's illustrated by Tony Ross, who has something of the Quentin Blake about him. I'll just give you a quick... Uh, quick look. So that's the sort of, uh, sort of illustrations. Oh, and we're down to 15 minutes, so I will shove the sausages in. I'm also going to turn the fan on because the sausages do tend to, uh, well they drip a lot of fat and then the fat goes into the base of the grill tray and then also keeps cooking and smoking. And so the kitchen gets very steamy. I have got the, I have got the door open which I just had because it was a nice day but I'm going to open the window as well. The difficulty with opening the windows is A, I need to remember to shut them later um, and B, I, because of where the window is I can open it and push it open but to get it shut I either have to climb on the side and lean or I have to go outside push it shut. Um, before I can reach the handle. So there's that. Is there anything? Uh, no, I'm going to leave that. And I, look, I'll probably look in every three minutes or so on the sausages and turn them once they start going brown so they get cooked all over. But uh, for now, I'll get back to the limericks. A Frenchman called Di de Brume had a clear premonition of doom. So, to hasten his death, he just held his breath and lay, all alone, on a tomb. An eccentric accountant called Gaines much preferred starters to mains. He'd have soup and then soup, and after that soup, and a very small portion of brains. There once was a deckhand called Chris, who quite enjoyed taking the piss. He stood up and roared, man overboard, when the victim was clearly amiss. A young trainee vicar called Steve so enjoyed himself one Christmas Eve that he spent Christmas Day on West Sussex Way doing things you'd never believe. A clever young schoolboy from Leicester allowed a sore finger to fester. It doubled in size and the sound of his cries could be heard from as far off as Chester. The thing about limericks is also they're quite short, so I could just keep my eye on the times, just do one, just come back and keep looking. Um, whereas even all of the other short poems I had, some of them were 30 seconds, a minute long. Whereas these, they're over in sort of 10 seconds. A cross-country runner called Bert put in a last-minute spurt. He shot past the leader and into a feeder, so the last 100 yards really hurt. Yeah, that's less than 10 seconds. There once was a fellow called Santa who was ever so proud of his banter. He put on a voice and called himself Joyce and make silly calls to Atlanta. Oh, now I have to turn the page with one hand. A promising athlete called Noel got his vaulting pole stuck in the hole. He flew through the air, but his pole just stayed there, and now he's sadly back on the dole. A young TV star from Jamaica had a stormy affair with a baker. He had the show, and she had the dough, but she gave it all up for a Quaker. An elderly man from Nantucket kept his wife in a very large bucket, his son in a tin and a dog in a bin, and nobody knows how they stuck it. Right, I think that's enough limericks for now, otherwise you tend to just sort of get a bit, a bit numb to them, a bit, uh, sort of a bit, a bit in you and you can't, uh, can't take, tell them one from the other. So I'm just now going to pop this and just get this in ready in position, ready to look at the... Uh, Look at the frying pan. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right. It's about time to turn the uh, tin chips. They're starting to go. And the sausages are varying shades of brown. See the ones at the back have gone more than the ones at the front. So um, I'm just going to turn all of those over, even, even though they're not cooked, because it helps to um, 
tucked in evenly. And I'll just stick between the gaps in the grill pan. And obviously, um, I won't clean the grill pan after I've done this, because like I said, I'm going to cook them tomorrow. And that's a, and that's a waste of time. But then after you've cooked meat on the grill pan, you do need to wash it before you do toast, otherwise your toast... Well, it wouldn't be necessarily terrible taste of sausage, but it's not, uh, not, not the uh, healthiest thing and off the bat. It's not, not great for you either. Um, I remember, oh, was just, I remember when I was a child, it was just such on my, my parents because they cooked a lot of things on the grill. They remember they once cooked um, some kind of fish, it was probably kippers, might be mackerel on the grill, um, and even though they cleaned it, the toast tasted like mackerel for sort of days afterwards. I remember the taste of that slightly fishy toast. And I like fish, um, but it wasn't great. It's a lovely day today, it's so hot. I think you know, there's some stuff I want to do in the garden and it's so hot. I had like, last week, I did a lot of stuff in the garden, like a half an hour at a time. The first two days it was very wet, the ground was very boggy and I had to go in when it rained. Uh, and then I had three days sort of where it was actually, it was reasonably nice and reasonably warm, but not too hot and also not wet. Um, and now it's not raining, it's not like, there's not any risk of rain at all, but now it's really hot. There's like, this sort of very little in between time. I haven't seen the baby birds again, I have been slightly looking out. I have seen some magpies though. So I'm trying to make this interesting for you because currently you're looking at an empty pan that's not even on a hob that's on. Um, which is why I normally have the theatre anecdotes, except I've now told you about everything I've watched up till now. Or uh, the poetry. And a friend of mine has been very soft, so I suppose I'll do one slightly longer poem from the uh, old classics of the verse. Ah, oh, this is just the page where it falls open. I don't know why, it's because, it's, it's because this, and things, this isn't a particularly favourite poem, it's just the spine's broken in the book. So it just falls open in the middle. I heard, this is The Rifles by James Stevens. I heard a bird at dawn, singing sweetly on a tree. The dew, that dew that was on the lawn, and the wind was on the lee. But I didn't listen to him, for he didn't sing to me. I didn't listen to him, for he didn't sing to me. That the dew was on the lawn, and the wind was on the lee. I was singing at the time, just as prettily as he. I was singing at the time, just as prettily as he, about the dew upon the lawn and the wind upon the lea. So I didn't listen to him as he sang upon a tree. That's quite amusing, but there isn't just there just isn't enough difference, I think, in the verses to justify being three verses. So I can see what the author was trying to do, but I'm not a fan. Okay, we're down to eight minutes left. So, oh, and the back of the sausages have gone very, very quickly you can see. So uh, now I'm going to turn them over. This is much harder with only one hand by the way, so now I'm going to turn them over again. Come on, come on. It's like doing pancakes. There we go. Turn them over and then put on the bacon ready. Unfortunately, you can't watch this because there's no way I can do that one-handed. Um, and I'm not going to adjust this to stand on the camera again. Right, so, again, we're doing this twice. This four. Again, the ideal thing for this bacon is that it goes nice and crispy. I like, I like a nice crisp bacon. And this bacon I think will go very quickly actually. So I'm going to put this under again. This is where it's really going to start spitting more. I'm, like, I'm going to turn that down slightly and I'm going to turn the oven up slightly. I'm going to put the bacon, the rest of the bacon back in the fridge and wash my hands. I'm doing 
Now I'm just going to start heating the oil ready for the eggs. Um, we're on five minutes to go. And the eggs, uh, for the, uh, that, again, that's the medium hob and the oil's on medium heat. So I'm going to leave that for sort of a minute. And then crack the eggs in. The sausages are going well. somewhere to put the shell just quickly while you're doing this so you can crack the eggs roughly at the same time and then throw the shells away. That was, oil well, wasn't quite as hot as I would liked because it helps if the oil crackles when they go in but also having the deeper oil also helps because then you can splash it over the top of the whites rather than the bottom of the white cooking where the yeah, yeah, yolk starts to go hard but the white still being very, still being translucent and not cooked on the top. And I like a nice, uh, I like a nice runny, runny yolk. Okay, the sausages are just about starting to look cooked, mostly. I don't really want to burn them. I'm going to give the backs another sort of 30 seconds, and then I'm going to uh, probably move, move them down to the... Uh, Plates heat to the uh, warm plates, ready to ready to just have stuff put on them. You can see there. The, this also splash, splashes back something rotten. And I, I also like it when the whites go crispy, which is better. I should have let the oil get hotter before I put crack the eggs in, because that's the main way to do that. Um, otherwise you have to leave them in too long and they don't um, again the yolk goes so hard right so I'm going to pull out my slightly warm plate again none of this you can see Moving the camera to walk through. I was like, they're slightly warm plates. That sausage cooked through. That sausage cooked through. That sausage could use like 30 seconds longer. That sausage could use like a minute longer. So they can go back under. And you know what I'm thinking about this before that? Lifting the grip to uh, open the lower oven so the handles are the right. There we go. And also, despite this deep oil, these uh, eggs have sort of just got to the bottom and stuck to the surface of the pan in a lot of places, which is annoying. They, these eggs, are, see these eggs, they've only been in like two minutes and they're already nearly as done as I'd like them. I'm actually 
if they continue cooking to keep it warm up, we don't really want to do that thing that's going back to the... How oh, my first one in my accident? Darn it, that's, that's the worst thing to do with a fried egg. I can do it at first. Well, I'm going to take the oven plate down and pop the one up anyway. Keep the heat. Yeah, that looks down to me. There we go. One egg. Set up the heat up. the other egg and again I'll probably leave that oil in there and use it again tomorrow because otherwise it's a massive waste of oil because the oil is perfectly fine and it's just so much oil to then only be used once and also save me from washing the pan up twice right salt my eggs I like uh, a nice bit of salt on a fried egg then that thing goes into wall that's the chip beaker if I open those, the chips could do with another, I think, another three minutes, I think, um, it's 200 degrees, so I'm just going to turn them around again, and let them go, oh, those sausages are done now. Although the bacon's not, so I'm going to turn the grill back up to full, back up to maximum maximum strength. Because um, I thought the bacon would be done a bit quicker, especially streaky bacon, because streaky bacon is much thinner than uh, black bacon, but it's not. So I'll flip the bacon over. overcook your sausages and uh, just generally uh, make your plate far too, far too hot and such. Right, so the uh, spatulas are in the sink. The pan, I'm le like I said, I'm leaving because I can use that oil again uh, for the fried eggs that I'm going to have tomorrow um, and that's convenient. because uh, it means I don't have to wash it up and then use more oil and then wash it up again. Oh yeah, oil will keep out like a day or two. I won't, um, I might cover it with cling film when uh, the pan's got less hot. Obviously don't do it right away because you'll just melt the cling film into the oil and then you can't use it again. But I will leave it and uh, Once it's cooled down, you can cover it up. And I'll probably cover it just in case insects get into it, but um, it, it's not, because they've got the doors open. But otherwise, that's just left, and then can be cooked again, and the bacon's just starting to go crisping now. And I've got 30 seconds left on the chips. And now they're about the right colour, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the oven off, but leave them in there so that they stay, they'll sort of, they'll stay cooking and stay warm. Because um, the bacon's only going to be another minute or two, so it won't, um, they won't, they won't burn. But also I don't want them to stay getting really hot. So like, because like the oven takes a while to cool down, so um, they'll continue cooking, but not, not at quite such a high temperature. And the bacon to keep an eye on because um, now it's really it's now gone really quickly to, to crispy on that one side. So now I'm going to turn it over to just crisp up the other side as well. And that should overtake sort of another 30 seconds. So while that's done, I'm just 
going to get for the final time everything that's out of the warming oven, red ink, painting up. And in fact, I can probably put the chips up now as well. So get the chips out. Oh, they look smell good. And the tray's still hot, so you have to pick it up with the with a warm hand, with a with a towel side of it, so you can uh, just sort of scrape the chips off it. And they're not too greasy as well, so I, I judge the amount of oil right. Sometimes I over oil them, and then they're less nice to eat. Come on. The thing about this is it's quite it's quite a large amount of chips. It means that there's uh, not much, not much room on the plate. I feel like that bacon probably yes, that bacon is just how I like it. And I actually didn't split the fat too badly, so I can turn. I'll leave the window and the door open. I'll turn the uh, fan off. There we go. So, the grill pan. And again, I don't need the grill pan un under the grill because the grill's still hot and because it's got all the fat dripped down into it. It will carry on cooking the fats until the grill cools down. And that makes it uh, really, again, that causes the fat to cook and smoke. And it's pleasant. my meal you can see the bacon that's the crispiness that I like again normally I have back bacon but that's how crispy I like my back bacon as well the eggs one of which is a bit drippy the chips the uh, of which there's a pile of sausages hidden under the chips and I'm gonna have mayonnaise with that and you could have I sometimes have ketchup as well but today I'm not going to but uh, yes so that all looks very delicious and I will as always uh, do a notification of what it tasted like uh, even though I've made this myself hundreds of times um but i'm going to very much enjoy it bon appetit finished the uh the uh, sausage egg bacon chips and they were very very tasty the chips could have done with a little more cooking i think i think i misremembered uh, how long i needed to do chips for it was more like um sort of 30 minutes than 25 uh, but they were still they were still absolutely fine the eggs uh, the eggs were nice the eggs are always good um, the bacon was just how I like it just sort of that that crispiness without being burnt um, I, I don't like the burnt taste but when when the fat's gone all hard and crunchy and delicious that was really really nice um, and I had it with all with plenty of mayonnaise so I had a very nice meal um, and that's really all there is to say about that bye bye now